<clears throat> so before we go to Romans, let's go to um, let's go to chapter two of the book of Acts. Acts chapter two. Acts is right before Romans. And this is on the day of Pentecost when everybody received the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And chapter 2. And Peter's all filled with the Holy Ghost and he stands up and gives a tremendous sermon to the thousands of people that gathered there because of everything that was going on. So they must have been making noise. They must have been doing something. But all of Jerusalem was stirred and, and came to, hey, what's going on in this building over here? You know, they're shouting and screaming and dancing and crying and doing a lot of things. And uh, at the very end, they are pricked in their heart by the sermon of Peter. And they say, well, what, what can we do? What shall we do? Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? So they said, What what can what shall we do? We've crucified him now, what can we do? And then Peter said unto him, Repent. The first thing that they had to do was repent. And repent means turn from your sins. And every human being in this life has a chance to repent. God's going to make sure of it. If they're hungry, if they're desirous, if He knows that there's a chance for them to accept Him, He will send somebody. And if there's nobody, He will send an angel. And repentance means that we accept the Lord Jesus Christ into our heart and we allow Him to wash our heart with His blood and give us a new heart inside to make us a new creature in Jesus Christ. And all we have to do for this new heart to be born inside of us is to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've done a lot of wrong things. I've done a lot of bad things in my life. I've fought with my brother. I've kicked my sister. I've, uh, I've lied. I've stolen. Maybe, maybe nothing big, but a pencil or whatever. All of us have these seeds down inside of us. And we might not be major criminals, but we've done these daily things that are coming out of this, out of this old heart over here that's full of darkness and death and, and, and sin, and it's under God's judgment. Okay? God's judgment is over us because of our sin, and we're full of sin. We're born sinners. And, and we, we choose sin after we're born. We come into it speaking lies, that one, of the, one of the Psalms says. It, we come out of the womb speaking lies. And we, we, we know how to control mom and daddy. We, we scream and cry, we want to have our will. <laughs> they don't jump fast enough, we, we make a big to-do about it. And, I mean, little tiny babies. And you can tell and like I explained many times, mommy doesn't have to sit down and tell that baby how to be selfish mm-hmm. or tell that ba- baby how to lie. It's in us. And this is what's called sin. And the only way that this sin can be taken out is when we accept Jesus Christ into our heart as, as our Savior and we ask Him to wash that heart with His blood. And when I speak of heart, I'm speaking of our nature. It's just a simple term of our soul and our spirit and our will. And when, when He comes in and He washes us, then we get a brand new heart down inside of us where He can start working within us to, to help us to become overcomers and to walk and to, and to be changed and be different. But we must, the first thing we need is the blood of Jesus Christ in our life. And that comes by a confession of our sins. Repentance means to turn away. Lord, I'm a sinner. I need You. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and wash away these sins. And I accept you as my only and sufficient Savior. And that's when we get saved. Have all of you done this? I didn't, I didn't, um, 
we did it on the phone with the, my husband's bishop in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I don't really remember everything that he did. I repented mm -hmm. for my sins. Not exactly the way you did, but, you know, not the way mm -hmm. you said, but I repented from what I remember almost every last one. And I, you know. Okay. If you would die tonight, which hopefully you won't, but if you would, where would you go? Where would I go? Mm -hmm. Where's my paper? Heaven or hell? <laughs> no, just simple. Heaven or hell? Heaven. Why? I believe I would. Why? Because I'm walking for a milk Amen. <laughs> that little habit. So, no, I'm not completely. And if you would stop doing that? I believe I would be in heaven with the Lord. Then we can be there by works? By works? Mm -mm. But I believe that. I'm not going to believe I'm going to go to hell. No, but why? Because I believe in him and because I, I'm trying to walk in his word. Mm -hmm. That's, that's... If, if we could have walked in his word, the Old Testament saints would have been sinned without... Would have been sinned. Would have been no. saved without, without having him having to come for us. The fact that Jesus Christ had to come and die means that, that man cannot walk in a righteous way. Right, because we sin. Mm -hmm. We sin all the time. Right. So the only thing that is going to, to break that bondage of sin on us, uh, but, but I repent, but it's not my repentance even that does it. It's the work of Jesus Christ coming into me and breaking that in me. It's Jesus' sacrifice. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. So I will go to hell. No. I'm, I'm trying to explain it. You're not paranoid? She's telling you why. When we accept the fact that we're sinners, we accept the fact I cannot live a righteous life. I cannot live, I cannot live like Jesus Christ. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. And the burden of sin is so much on me. And so there comes a time when God will send somebody to tell us, you know, Jesus, Jesus saves. Your works will not save you. You can, you can try to do good works. You can try to be a good person. But all of your trying will not do it. It's a gift of God. He gave us salvation in Jesus Christ. And it's like, it's like we're in jail. And we're locked up in sin. And, and somebody comes to the judge and says, here's the fine. I pay the fine. So, um, what's your name? Um, Anna. So Anna can get out of jail. Father, here's, here's my blood. This is in payment for all of Anna's sin. And so the father comes and he opens the door. And Anna can walk free. Not for anything you did, but for what Jesus Christ did for you. He shed his blood and he paid the price. Okay? And all we have to do is accept to walk out of that jail. Accept what he did for us. And when, when we accept it then, we accept it enough that we want him to come and live inside of our heart. So it's not by our works, but by his work. It's not by my life, but the life that he gave on Calvary. So are there saved Christians that um, if they die right now, they wouldn't go to heaven? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if a person has Jesus Christ in their heart, they will go to heaven. Huh? Because the blood of Jesus Christ is our ticket into heaven. It's that simple. But not the blood that I, I believe he died. Catholics believe he died. In, from the day you're born, you have a crucifix, and, and he died. Uh, the Word of God says the, the devils believe in God, and they tremble. So just the fact that you know that isn't enough. I can, I can take, uh, I can, is this real delicate? I can take this, and I say, here, I'm a doctor, and I say, here's this medicine. If you take one capsule every six hours for three days, your sore throat will be healed. You take it home, and you sit it up on the shelf, and you say, yeah, that medicine is really going to heal me. I know it. The doctor said it was going to heal me. And you go about your business. And you walk by and say, oh, I know that medicine is really good. 
and, and you look at it and you, you, you sniff it. Yeah, that doctor's really good. He said that medicine's really neat. What do you have to do? You have to take it. You have to take it inside of you what do you for have? it to work. <laughs> Well, um, you know, for getting saved, I was, um, on this thing looking for my watch, and then, um, you know, I turned off the light, and then I, first, it was off, and then I went to put it back on, and then, um, I was just looking all around, but not, you know, where I was walking, so, and then I put my other, my foot, this foot, on, on a place where it didn't have no, um, none of some, like, like this, like this, mm-hmm. and I fell off, and I hit, and I had hit my um, side on um, my bike, and you know how the sharp part, it hit my side, and hopefully it wasn't bleeding. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus Christ that's not, you can't see it, it's invisible, it's not like the blood that we see red, mm-hmm. red blood, it's, it's, it's an invisible portion of Jesus Christ because you can't see Jesus either but he's here with us tonight so his blood is invisible and his blood needs to come down within our invisible heart you can't see your inner heart can you you can't see it so so his blood that you you you, you can't see it but it's going to come down inside like a medicine that you take and you accept it and when it gets inside then it cleans out all of the infection and you're healed so when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, you're taking that medicine down inside of you of his blood. And then that blood heals you of the sin of anger and fighting and jealousy and all of that. Then you won't have to give an account on Judgment Day for You'll be free from that. But it's not because you were a good boy. It's because Jesus, this this cup of medicine is Jesus Christ. And you have to turn away from it and try not to do it again. Mm-hmm. And then that, that implies then the, the daily salvation of our daily work because the sin is going to keep coming up. But what we what we did before that, the day we accept Jesus Christ, that's covered, that's under the blood, that's carried away. But is this clear? You've got to take this. You, you, you take it in and then you step outside of the gate of the jail. And you're free. And you've got something inside of you that's, that's healed you of your inner problem. And man could not make, invent, do anything to make this medicine. It took the blood of the Son of God shed on Calvary to buy us our entrance into heaven. That makes, that's the difference. Paul said, for by grace ye are saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Works Works would be trying to be good, uh, giving money to the church, uh, helping your fellow man. Because I keep getting out of that scripture that that, um, that you should have faith, but you should also um, do things. Mm -hmm. That's after you're saved. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the very first time salvation. After that, then, there's a walk of righteousness that Jesus Christ will help you to do. And that's then when your works account. That's when your works count to your, to your good. That's when you get brownie points. <laughs> After your salvation through Jesus Christ. But our, our original work of salvation, we cannot do it. That's why the Son of God had to come down. And I, I think about it so many, many times, and I've mentioned it so many times. God knows everything, and God can do anything He wants, right? He could have invented some way to save mankind from his sin. But the fact that His Son had to come and die means that was the only way that God could clear out the sin within our souls. Otherwise, He would have invented or created some other way. And so it's a tremendous offense to God and to His Son for man to reject that sacrifice that cost His Son so much. So all we have to do in this life is accept Jesus Christ into our hearts. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, accept Him into your heart, and and, and then that new life comes into you and you're saved. Okay?
You understand? Yeah. You want to pray? Yeah. And let's ask Jesus in. Yeah. If you, I know you've you've done it, but with more understanding, and we'll just we'll just do it, and we'll just make double sure. Do you understand now? Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Okay. Now I'm going to pray, and you pray in a, out loud with me. But, but don't say it just because I'm saying it. The fact that you all are here, I perceive that you are sincere. <laughs> perceive that you are very sincere. And so you close your eyes, you close your eyes, and you think and imagine yourself at the foot of the cross. And say, Jesus, I come to you tonight because I believe that you died in my place on Calvary. I'm a sinner, Lord. I've done many things in my life that are not like you and that make you very sad and break your word. But I repent, Jesus. I, repent, Jesus. I, want you to forgive me. I want you to forgive me. I want to love you. I want to follow you. Jesus, tonight, I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my heart. And I ask you, I ask you to wash me with your blood. Every area of my soul. My spirit. My, my, will, my will, my heart, my heart every, bit of my being, every bit of my being, let it be washed, let it be washed in your life giving blood. blood. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are my Savior from this day forward. From this day forward. Amen. Amen. Now let me ask, what's your name? Dominic. Dominic. Uh, are you sure of your salvation? What's that mean? Are you sure that you'll go with Jesus when you die? Why? Because most of the time I just um, be good and um, listen and um, it, instead of, you know, like playing around. Mm-hmm. What, but what did Jesus do for you right now? He let me come here in the car. But right now when you prayed? Um, he let me open my spirit and stuff and um, let him just take over. Okay. And then... Um, what did he do with your sin? He made it, he like turned it around and made it good. Mm-hmm. And um, What did he do with his blood? put it into me so that I could go up. That's right. Are you sure of your salvation? Yeah. Why? Because Jesus, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Exactly. Do you know where you'll go when you die? Right. Why? Because I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Amen. Let's thank Him. We all thank Him in your own words. Precious Jesus, we glorify you tonight. We thank you. We praise you. We love you, Lord for your salvation so free so free so free Lord thank you Heavenly Father for what you've done tonight thank you Lord Jesus Christ for your presence for your cleansing for your mercy for your goodness Lord we praise you Heavenly Father thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Heavenly Father let the life that you've put in your children grow to strong trees of righteousness, O oh Lord God. Show them how to grow up in your light and in your life and in your love. Show them how to walk every day in a close relationship with you. Heavenly Father, teach them to be overcomers. Teach them, Lord Jesus Christ, how to, how to withstand the evils and the lies of this world and of the devil. It's a, it comes at every hour to destroy and to pull apart. Put your hand, Lord God, 
strongly upon them, Father. Put your name round about them, Lord Jesus Christ, in a, in a powerful way to keep them and to guard them. These souls, O oh Lord God, that you have saved through your Son, Jesus Christ. We praise you for it and we thank you for it. Keep them for your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 And bless them and help them to grow, Lord. And we'll give you the praise for it. Holy Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you for it, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sweet Jesus. So here on the day of Pentecost, Peter said, repent. Just what right now happened. The the repentance, the understanding, the the coming in of Jesus into your hearts. And 3,000 people were saved that day by hearing the word. Going back to this verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So he told them the second thing you need to do today, today, now sometimes time goes by uh, before people get baptized, but he said the second thing you need, you don't only need the blood, but you also need a water experience in the name of Jesus Christ. And name means nature, character, and authority. When we go down into water, let's go to X, X, seven, X, Romans six, Romans chapter six. This water is water baptism. Okay, and the word baptism means to be submerged completely. It doesn't mean just sprinkled. It doesn't mean just halfway. It means to be submerged completely. And here in chapter 6, this is the the water baptism chapter, uh, starting in verse 3. It says here, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? And very quickly, there's a whole lot, and it's one of my favorite things, and I could spend hours on it, but I won't do it tonight. When, let's put a, 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 a Christian here. He's got his new heart. He's got Jesus Christ in his heart. He's standing on the edge of water baptism. Paul says here, when you get baptized, don't you know that when you get baptized into Jesus, the name, and name means nature, character, and authority, you're also being baptized into his death. Okay? And I'll explain it in just a minute. He said, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we get new life also through this. And it goes on to say, um, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. This new life is resurrection life. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay? So here we are standing on the edge of the waters of baptism, okay? And we're fat. We're still pretty fat with a lot of attitudes. Our nature is not like the nature of Jesus Christ. Our nature is still anger. Our nature is still rebellion. Our nature is still pride. You're not going to tell me what to do. We still have these things inside of us. And, and, and we go to Jesus Christ and we say, forgive me. And his blood forgives. But we still keep cranking out and cranking out sin every day. It still keeps coming up in us. And we say, Jesus, forgive us. And he's faithful and just to forgive us. But the next day I crank out some more of, the, of another type of sin. Water baptism is going to stop the cranking. It's going to stop the inner, the inner, the inner workings that produce the sin within us. And it's this nature of Jesus Christ that's going to come in to the, this 
evil nature within me and destroy. Okay? His name, well, let me make it even more simple than that. When, when I go down into water baptism, I'm going to say, Jesus, I want your nature, not my nature. I accept your, your authority in my life. I accept your name in my life. I don't want my name. I don't want my nature. I don't want my headship and my authority ruling and reigning anymore. I accept your nature and your name down over me. And it's like the first compartment of the waters when you go down in. You're going to hit that name, and that name is going to start making a change inside of your life. A real, real change. You're not going to fight with... You, you still have the two boys? You're not going to fight with your brother. You're not going to fight at school as much. You're going to have power. You're going to want to be good. You're going to want to help mother. And, uh, there's going to be some changes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. No, I want to fight. Anyway, do you understand this? The name, the nature. We're being baptized in the name. That's why you go down in his name. Because Jesus Christ is the overcomer of overcomers. He overcame all the power of the devil, all the power of the flesh, and all the power of the world. He is the, the par excellence overcomer of all time and eternity. So when we go down into that, and, and also many times I explain it, if we would put enamel paint on the top of a swimming pool, and just pour out the paint in that swimming pool, it would have a, a, a layer of paint on the top of it, right? White paint. Let's put it, make it white paint. When we, when we baptize people, we anoint, not with paint, but with, with a little bit of oil, and we say, Jesus, I want your name to come down into this water. I want your nature in this water. I want the power of your authority down in this water. And we anoint the waters with the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? So when, when a person jumps into that swimming pool with that white paint, Swims around a little bit and comes out of that swimming pool. What's going to What's going to happen to him? What's going to happen? He's going to die. No. Can he come out with white paint? Why? Because that name is over that person. They accept that nature of Jesus Christ, and that nature then is going to start working on this inner on this inner working inside of of sin and, and the cranking out of sin daily, day after day. This is where we pick up the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And Paul says in Philippians that, that he was given a name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that he is Lord. So that after water baptism, when my anger comes up and my, my impatience comes up, I can say, Jesus, I claim your name. And, and that name will just start... And it'll make my nature bow its knee and say, Lord, you're, you're head, you're master. I humble myself. I accept it. And his name then rules and reigns. <laughs> he hit me. And he had sparks over me. He's sending sparks. I know. He went, who? I went, who? So you understand? This is the importance of Jesus' name baptism. And the devil hates Jesus' name baptism because this is where a lot of our power for growing comes from when we say Jesus put your blood on me that's important but then after you get baptized you can say Jesus I claim your waters also to come down upon me to come down inside of me and to wash me and and it's not just a washing it's not just a cleansing but we get that authority we have then the power we can stand in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus because I have accepted it on me I have accepted that I want that name to work in me. So that name is going to have a lot more power than if I just say in the name of Jesus this and this. Just all that stuff. All that stuff. In the name of Jesus. And then he needs a lot of it going to public school. You go to public school, right? He needs a lot of it. And inside of this old heart here, this old heart is full of death. Okay, And so Jesus Christ has also provided his death to kill our death. Do you understand that? Nothing else can, can destroy our death except the death of Jesus Christ. And death, the only thing death means, even in the natural, is separation. That's what death is. And so when we go down in there, we say, Jesus, I want your name over. 
then we, we go into this second compartment to explain it like that. You don't you don't have to say you don't have to say anything. Oh, yeah. So and when when you're down there then in verse eight it says, knowing that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth you should not serve sin. So down here in death, our old man, this old heart, is going to be be chopped up by the power of the name and the death, the death of Jesus Christ. He's going to start separating, 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 separating within us to separate out the, the anger, the rebellion, the, the pride, the, the jealousy, the, all these things that are working down inside of us that keep us away from Him. So there's a, there's a portion of his waters that's called waters of death. And his death overcomes my death. And then I come up on this other side with, I've made drawing with a new life, shouting and dancing and overcoming life. Amen. And if you, if you keep on reading here, and you can read farther on down here, when we come up on this other side with this new life, this is resurrection life. And resurrection life means it's passed through death so it cannot die again. And it's overcoming life. What's died in me and been replaced with Jesus Christ, that part, that's overcoming. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's, I mean, if it's resurrected, it can't die again. It has, it, it, if it's overcome the enemy, the enemy's overcome. There's nothing more to overcome. It's overcome. It's done away with. It was killed down here in his death through the power of the nature of Jesus Christ. And so you come up over here on the other side then and then you've got, then you have all the right that you have the same way that you have the right every day to plead the blood. By faith, every day you can plead the waters of his name, death, and life down upon you to change. You can, you, you ask for the, the, the name, the death, and the life in these waters of Jesus Christ. And you ask it by faith. Not, you're not going to be baptized every day. You're not going down into a pool of water every day. But the invisible water, just like the blood is invisible, the water is invisible after we go into a literal experience. And we can ask it then to come down upon us and to wash us and to cleanse out all of these things within us. And so it's, it is an experience. It's not just something to join a church or it's not something you do just because. That's why it's, it's necessary to understand at least a little bit. And the more you go on, the more you'll understand. And a year or two down the line, you'll want to get baptized again because all of a sudden, oh, that's what it was. And you want to get baptized all over again. But it won't be necessary. <laughs> There's one baptism anyway. <laughs> one, one baptism. So Peter on the day of Pentecost said, Repent. Be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the third part of the foundation that you all need to get. If you don't have it, you need to look for it. And this is their spiritual foundation. Once the foundation's placed, then you can start building your spiritual stature on top of it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So what are you going to go down into? Um, a pool of water with what? Um, white paint on the line. <laughs> I think it might be good to explain maybe to him. I know he wants to get baptized a whole lot. When you get baptized, you're going to get baptized in Jesus' name. Remember I was telling you that at home? You can't get baptized in paint. <laughs> That was just the example. I know she's playing like a paint. That, that was just the example. There's oil instead of paint, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to get baptized in Jesus' name. And then you know your heart that has all that bad stuff in it? Like, you know, you're, you're wanting to fight and you're wanting to be smart with you and all that bad stuff? Well, when you go into the water, it's going to be washed. It's clean. It's going to be, you're going to get a new heart. It's going to be like that. It's going to be real clean and you're not going to have all those feelings anymore. Understand? Well, he'll have them, but you'll, but he'll have something to take care of. Them. You'll, have, you'll have them, but you you when you have those feelings, you can ask for the name of Jesus, for the water to like be baptized again, like invisible, like she was saying. Are you listening? What did I say? You said the eyes. Water. 